Who is the best player in the Minecraft Life series? The Minecraft Life series includes Third Life, Last Life, Double Life, and Limited Life, with each having the objective to be the last player standing. With a total of 17 members, two of which have only played for one season, we've seen a lot of patterns on the range of skill. I'm going to be ranking every member of the Life series based on their overall skills throughout all seasons of surviving, cleverness, their offensive abilities, abilities to get kills, and their ability to get bit, and how they work as a teammate, but mainly how good they are at surviving. And when I mean every member, I mean every member. So let's stop wasting time. In 17th place or last place, we have none other than Solidarity. I mean really, who else would you expect? Solidarity slash Jimmy is notoriously bad at the game. With a lack of PvP skills, his overall clumsiness, and an urge to take some of the dumbest risks, it kinda makes sense why he gets targeted so frequently. I mean, this man has managed to die first in every single season. And if you're thinking, oh, he's just unlucky, take a look at his limited life final death. He falls off while pushing a TNT minecart, switches to a pearl in hand, and then switches out. And then he dies. Also, he isn't the best person to be a teammate. In 16th place, I put Skizzleman. Now, with all due respect, Skiz isn't very good at PvP, nor taking the offense. He's managed to die 3rd in 3rd life and 2nd in limited life. I mean, the guy was hours behind during most of limited life. Now, I can't really blame him since Skiz just seems to be inexperienced with PvP, and a lot of the deaths, especially the ones in limited life, were just unlucky. I mean, he got some kills too, but even though he may have a lack of experience in combat, Skiz still makes a pretty good and supporting teammate. He manages to barely make any enemies, and he does try his best. In 15th place, we have good times with Scar. Now, this is someone who I had a hard time deciding whether to put him down here or higher up, cause Scar has had some of the comically worst plays and some of the craziest. I mean, Scar is globally known for being one of the clumsiest Minecraft players out there. Not only has he died various times in the Life series to really random things, but he also does the same in Hermitcraft. But I think it's this lack of carefulness that also makes him menacing to others. The amount of risks that Scar takes to go in the offensive has actually paid off. He's gotten many, many kills, which I would not think is possible. He literally made it to second place in third life, but that could probably be because he kind of got carried by Grian. Aside from combat, Scar's negotiative maneuvers and deals are pretty clever, but still, he's a pretty clumsy character as his deaths outweigh his kills, and he's a comically bad teammate. In 14th place, I put Smallish Beans. Just like Scar, I also had a hard time deciding where to put Joel. Just like Scar, Joel takes way too many risks which have either ended in bad things or unexpectedly good things. Take Last Life for example, where he managed to go from 4 lives to 1 in a single session, and he wasn't able to get a single red kill until session 4. Or Limited Life, where he and Jimmy managed to die at like at least 5 times per session. But then there's also Double Life, where Joel and Etho actually became pretty menacing. Joel isn't horrible at PvP, it just seems like he has no caution, which is why he dies so often. In 13th place, we have Mumbo Jumbo. Now, we have to give Mumbo a giant break here, cause he's only been in the series for one season, which was Last Life. But it's kinda clear that he doesn't really have much experience with PvP or combat, and he dies at a fairly less than average pace. Maybe if he were given more chances, we could see his technical ability come into play more, like with setting traps, but for now, Mumbo just doesn't seem to have as much experience in the series compared to others. In 12th place, I put Zombie Cleo. Now, Cleo isn't that bad at the game, but she also isn't astonishingly professional at it either. She's a bit mid to average in PvP, but her lust for vengeance and offense kinda makes up for it. Even though she doesn't have as much kills as some of the others, she's probably the least gullible on the server as Cleo seems ready for any betrayal. She also managed to get dual second place in double life, but she may have been carried a little by Martin, though they didn't really help each other directly. Now in 11th place, I'm gonna put LD Shadow Lady. Just like Mumbo, we also have to give Lizzie credit since she's only been on Last Life. It seems like she doesn't have much experience with PvP, but she also seems to be kinda good at not dying too often. Probably because she doesn't make too many enemies, since throughout the server she's made many deals or negotiations with people, similar to Scar. But again, her lack of experience compared to the other lifers gives her a big disadvantage. In 10th place, I put Tango Tech. Tango isn't the best at keeping lives, especially towards the final sessions. 
take Last Life for example, where he final died from his own TNT trap while testing it, or Limited Life, where he was killed way more than he got kills, and final died from falling while chasing Scar. Now, I wouldn't say he's exceptionally bad, but Tango just doesn't seem to have as much skills with PvP than others. Tango seems to be much more skilled on the technical side of the life series, such as making farms help benefit his team, making him a pretty good teammate. If not for his cooperation and technical skills or games, I'd probably rank him lower than Lizzie, maybe even Cleo. In 9th place lies B00. I'd say that B-dubs is at the exact midpoint within the range of good players and bad players. He's not exceptionally professional, but he's not under average either. He's alright with PvP and his rate of dying can depend sometimes, like with Last Life where he lost a number of lives but also gained them back. B-dubs managed to get 3rd place in 3rd life and dual 3rd place in double life. I'd say he works pretty decently as a teammate, but he also isn't really trustworthy since he betrayed Impulse in 3rd life, Tango in last life for a little, and almost the clockers once in limited life. In 8th place, we have Big B Stats. Big B Stats is actually surprisingly good at surviving, but it seems like his main tactics for this are to avoid most conflicts. Big B barely gets on anyone's bad side cause he's just an overall really chill dude. But he also doesn't really get on the offense that much, and when he does, those are usually the times where he loses lives. He's kinda mid to average in PvP, but his tactics of bystanding have actually kinda paid off. I mean, Big B became the last green on 3rd life without laying a single finger. But if he were to go on the offense more, I think he'd probably die much more often. In 7th place, I put Green. Green is actually a fairly good PvPer and he makes some pretty good traps sometimes, which have led to a lot of kills. However, he always seems to pair up with some of the worst teammates which drag him down a lot from his full potential. He was literally Scar's bodyguard for most of 3rd life, was his soulmate in double life, and he paired up with Jimmy and Joel in limited life. I'd say Green has more experience with PvP than most of the members, especially with his time in MCC. He's managed to become the winner of 3rd life, but he also final died pretty pathetically in double life and limited life. But overall, he's still a pretty good player. In 6th place, we have Pearlescent Moon. Pearl is surprisingly pretty good at not losing lives, but similar to Big B, she doesn't seem to go into offense as much as others, even though she takes some risks. Pearl managed to become the dual winner of Double Life and got 4th place in both Last Life and Limited Life. Her win in Double Life may have been partially since she paired with Scott, but they weren't actually teamed up even though they were soulmates. Alright, in 5th place we have Impulse SV. Okay, Impulse has managed to get progressively better at surviving and PvP with each season and it's really impressive. In 3rd life, he was kinda average, but in last life and double life, he got better, and in limited life, he actually kinda popped off. The amount of kills that man had really surprised me. He managed to get dual 3rd place in double life and 2nd place in limited life, and with the way he plays, he's not just getting lucky either. Aside from combat, Impulse is also pretty good at the technical side of things like Tango, which makes him a pretty good teammate too. In 4th place, I put Rendog. Honestly, one of my favorite players of the series. Ren's pretty good at surviving in combat and he makes a pretty good teammate too. His ability to go on the offense and his lust for vengeance makes him kinda menacing to other players. He's literally managed to lead half the server of 3rd life and got 2nd place in last life. It seems like Ren focuses more on the storyline aspect of things though, but he's still able to intertwine it with the actual gameplay and combat. In 3rd place, we have Ethos Lab one of the most menacing players to the others. Etho's been pretty good at surviving for most of the seasons, and he's pretty good at PvP too. I can see why a lot of the others could be scared of him. However, he did kind of fall off in limited life, but that could be because of the clockers. And even then, he still managed to get 5th place in limited life. He's also gotten some pretty good kills with Joel in double life. Aside from combat, Etho is an automation and redstone weapon, which makes him a pretty good teammate. And then there were two. In second place, we have none other than In The Littlewood. Martin is undoubtedly cracked at PvP, especially compared to everyone else in the series. Aside from limited life, he's managed to stay with a consistent number of lives for most of the sessions and his offensive abilities are really impressive. Now, Martin does have experience in MCC, which could explain for his PvP skills. Martin's managed to become the winner of limited life, dual second place in double life, and third place in last life. 
and just like Ren, he also focuses on the storyline aspect of things, but he has a pretty good balance between that and actual combat. I would not want to mess with Martin on any day. And finally, we have our last member, the one who may be the best player of the Life series. In first place lies the one and only Scott Major. Okay, is this really a surprise though? Scott is undoubtedly crazy and cracked with PvP. Being the literal co-host of MCC, his experience is off the charts. Scott has managed to become the winner of Last Life, dual winner of Double Life, and third place in Limited Life. I mean, we can't forget his killing rampage in Limited Life. He's managed to stay at a consistent number of lives throughout each season and with hours in Limited Life. Most of the times where Scott actually dies is because he gives his lives or hours to other players. I like that he doesn't just survive for himself, but he helps out others too. Now, Scott doesn't really participate in the improvised storyline aspects of things, which I know a lot of people are kind of mad about, but personally, I don't think he has to, since anything that happens, happens. But this man is undoubtedly a PvP titan. And there we have it, all 17 members of the Life series ranked. I don't mean any hate to any of the players, I love them all, and I'm aware that it's just for fun. Now, this ranking is mainly my opinion, so I'd like to hear how you guys would rank each member. Do you agree with this list, or do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to subscribe because I make content just like this. I'm planning to make a video addressing Hermitcraft's major absence this season, so stay tuned. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone!